All right, so <coughs> set theory is a short unit. Uh, again, we've got one, two, three. So, uh, yeah. Short unit, again, four periods. Get lost there? They know where the bathroom is. They can get there all by themselves. No, I was just talking about them. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, short unit, four periods again, right? No quiz or uh, assignment or anything again because it's a short unit, so there's only four periods. Uh, what I would like to emphasize is you get the stuff done, right? And this is different, right? There's not really a lot of, you know, what with math in there as such. Like, there's no algebra, you're not really solving a lot of equations or anything like that. We're not dealing with uh, functions. This is more real life stuff, so you should be able to relate to this maybe a little bit easier than to some of the other sections that we've done, especially like exponents and logs and all those formulas. But there are some symbols that you have to learn. Uh, so you've got that formula sheet I gave you, the white copy that you can write on, so if you want to make any notes on that. But it's really important to stay up on this, because again, it is only four days. So we're going to go through this, uh, which is the backside of the timeline. And then what I would recommend you do is go into section 1.1 in the book and read through all the examples. There's just some more examples that will just help to cement this, right? And then do the questions because there's no substitute for doing the questions. And I was going to say you should be able to get that all done this period and you would have been able to if, you know, we hadn't spent the last good chunk of it uh, listening to the bells. So you may have to get this stuff done at home, but it shouldn't take all that long. And it should kind of make sense to you, and, you know, because it's more real life stuff. So, some definitions. Uh, and these definitions are also all in the textbook in section 1.1, usually in the left hand margin in green. So, a set. A set is a collection of distinguishable objects, right? Things that we can tell apart. So, for example, the set of whole numbers. Uh, we use set notation, that's these brace brackets. So W equals, open brace bracket, 0, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, dot, dot, dot. Um, element, an object in a set. So example 3 is an element of the set of whole numbers, as is 12, as is 172, and so on. Universal set, the set of all elements under consideration for a particular context, also called the sample space. Example, the universal set of digits is D is equal to the set consisting of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right? So there are 10 digits in our system. Uh, subset, a set whose elements, <laughs> elements all belong to another set. Example, the set of odd digits. That's a subset of this. Right? Each of these guys here is, whoops, <laughs> is contained in the set of digits. So it's called a subset. In set notation, this is written as O is a subset of D. Okay, so there's your first new symbol, right? And we get a few of these. And they are defined on the formula sheet, but it's still a good idea to make sure you practice this so that uh, it becomes second nature and you're not sort of wondering what's a subset. Complement. Uh, you did well on the test. Well, that's a complement. But in math, this complement, which is spelled differently, all the elements of a universal set that do not belong to the subset of it. For example, so we call it O prime, and this little apostrophe that's written there is read as a prime. So it's the set O prime, and it consists of every element of the universal set which is not a member of O. So O is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. O prime is everything that isn't, which is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So that's the complement of O as a subset of the universal set of digits D, right? So we have this universal set. Within that, then we have subsets. Yes? Um, if you made 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, could that be a subset first? Sure. And then the complement ends up, like, does it, is it just whichever one you choose and the other one's the complement, or? Yeah, so we could have said that the set E for even is like, oh, in this case, would be odd digits, right? And we could say E is the set 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And then E prime would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Right? We can also pick another subset of the digits, and you know, it could just be the numbers that are 5 or smaller. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the complement would be 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? 
empty set, a set with no elements. For example, the set of odd numbers divisible by 2 is the empty set. Right? If we're looking for this set, which is where they're divisible by 2, it's the empty set. Notation, a set of brace brackets with nothing in there, or this symbol here, which is like a 0 with a slash through it, is known as the empty set. And I think those are also on your formula sheet. Disjoint sets. Two or more sets having no elements in common. So for example, these two sets here are disjoint. They have no common elements, right? Um, number of elements in a set. N bracket D bracket is the number of elements in set D. So the number of elements in set D is 10. The number of elements in set O is how many do we have in O? Save time, there's five. Infinite set, a set with an infinite number of elements. For example, the set of whole numbers. W is 0, 1, 2, 3, comma, dot, dot, dot. Continues on forever, so that's infinite. You don't want to count that one, right? Venn diagram. You've all seen Venn diagrams before, right? So a Venn diagram. So in this case, for example, for the set of digits, so the, the rectangle represents digits, okay? All the digits. The O represents the odd digits, which is inside this circle. Where is O prime? On this diagram, where would I show O prime? So inside the box, but outside the circle. Okay. So those are all the, and if I listed them actually, this would be one, three, five, I would just put these numbers here, and here I would put O prime, right? The, the set, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And that's how we could actually physically list the numbers. Now you've seen Venn diagrams where there is some uh, overlap. So there's a Venn diagram with some overlap. So inside the green, what's, what's the green set? It's not a beaver. The platypus. Oh, yeah. It's a set of all platypuses. <laughs> and what's the uh, what's the? That's, the <laughs> That's a platypus playing a guitar. What's on the other side? <laughs> duck playing a keyboard. And where do they intersect? A duck billed platypus playing a guitar, right? So that's the intersection of those two sets, right? So that's what's common to both sets, right? It is a platypus, it is also a duck, it is playing a stringed instrument and a keyboard, right? So, that's uh, the example of one of the great Venn diagrams. Okay, practice. List the elements in each of the following sets. So the set P is prime numbers less than 20. Let's list them then. So P is equal to, what's the first prime number? Okay, I'm gonna go with two. One is, by definition, not prime. What's the characteristic of a prime number? That it's only divisible by itself and one, right? So two is the only even prime number since every even number is divisible by two, right? Then we got three, five, seven, eleven, <coughs> 13, what's next? 17, 17 and 19. Uh, okay, and, and that's it, right? So we're done. T is equal to the set of all T such that T is equal to four times X where X is between one and four and x belongs to the natural numbers. So what's t? That's a fancy way of saying what? Multiples of 4, right? Between 4 and 16. So we say it's 4 times x, where x goes between 1 and 4, but x is a natural number, right? A counting number, like 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, and 4 times 4. So just a fancy way of saying all the multiples of 4 between 4 and 16. Tony is the owner of a sandwich shop. Customers may put any of the following toppings on their sandwiches. Lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, pickles, onions, olives, roast beef, and salami. 
Let T equal sandwich toppings available at Tony's shop. State the value of N of T. So what is N of T? So looking further up the page, yeah, but what's N of T? Look further up the page. Eight? Okay. And what does it mean? This is the number of toppings available. Okay, so N bracket, letter bracket, is the number of elements in a particular set. So in this case, there are eight sandwich toppings available. Okay, state whether uh, each of the following is a subset of T. So are olives, pickles, and tomatoes, are they all in T? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. They are all elements of T. <laughs> Lettuce, cheese, bacon, salami. No, there's no bacon. No, there's no bacon, right. So, no, no bacon in T. The empty set, is the empty set a subset of T? The answer is yes, by definition. Yes, so empty sets are always part of the universal set. So an empty set is always a subset of any given set. Keep that in mind, right? That would make a nice multiple choice question on a diploma, right? Which of the following are subsets of some given set, right? And they throw the empty set in there, and you're sitting there at that point trying to decide. And I know all of these are, and these two answers are the same, but one has the empty set and one doesn't. Which one? Okay, the one with the empty set, right? Because it is part of the set. And is T a subset of T? Yes. Okay, they are the same set. Okay, so all elements of T are also considered a subset, right? So the empty set and everything is considered a subset of the universal set. All right, so these are kind of definition-y things, right? That I want. These are kind of more obvious because you just look and say, yeah, that's part of no bacon isn't in there, so that isn't part. Okay, draw a Venn diagram to show the universal set is natural numbers from 1 to 40. Okay? We don't need to list those, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, that, 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 up to 40. But let's list E, F, and S. So what's E? Multiples of 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39. Now, the reason I'm listing these is I want to know, are, are any elements of, uh, of F a subset of E? Right? Do they belong in both sets? Are any elements of S a subset? So F, multiples of 15, that's pretty easy. What are the multiples of 15? <coughs> From 1 to 40? 15 and 30. Multiples of 9? Nine. 9, what else? 18, 27, okay, and then we go to 45, right? So when we go to draw this, we have U, the universal set. That's going to include all the numbers from 1 to 40. Within that set, we have multiples of 3, so that's E. Are any elements of F also elements of E? So where do the Fs belong? Inside E or outside E? Inside, right? F is a subset of E. 
So inside E, we're going to put F. Now, are any elements of F and S the same? F is multiples of 15, so no. Oh, no. F, no, not F. F, F and S. So there, 15 and 30 belong in F. S is also a subset of E, right? Any multiple of 9 is also a multiple of 3. So we need another subset within here, which is S, and it contains 9, 18, 27, and 36. Now, inside E, we list all the other numbers, which belong only to E, but are not part of F or S, right? So 3 fits in there, 6 fits in there, 9 doesn't, because 9 is already, so 9 is already inside E, right? So I don't need to write 9 down again, it's inside of E, 9, uh, 12, 15, already inside there, right? 18, already taken care of, 21, uh, 24, Okay, 27, it's already inside there, don't need to write it again. 30, uh, nope, don't want to write that, right? I didn't mean, didn't want to or need to write 30, that was, it's already in there. So 33, 36, nope, shouldn't have done that either, right? 36 is also already in there, so then 39. So we have F and S are subsets of E, right? They're within, they're enclosed by E. They don't share anything in common, so we're not going to overlap them, right? They're not playing, they're not a platypus and a duck bill and, and that. So they, these guys are disjoint sets, right? They don't contain any elements in common. And now we've got the rest of the numbers, right? And they go up here, just in, inside the box. So one, two, not three, you know, four, Five, uh, we don't need six, we don't need any multiples, so seven, eight, don't need nine, ten, eleven, we don't need twelve, thirteen, fourteen, don't need fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, don't need eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one's already counted for, right? So you can only be in one spot, you can't be both outside the circle and inside, right? You're either a multiple of three or you're not. Anything out here is not a multiple of three. Okay, so 20, 22, uh, 24, no, 25, 26, 27, no, 28, 29, not 30, 31, 32, not 33, 34, 35, 37, 38, and 40. Okay, so that box U contains every number from 1 to 40. List it only once, right? You're not going to find a five in two different places. And placed in its appropriate sets. Okay, if it's a multiple of three, it's inside the circle E. All multiples of three are inside the circle E. If it's then a multiple of 15, it's inside the circle F, right? Which belongs inside E because 15 and 30 are both multiples of three. If it's a multiple of 9, it's inside the circle S, which is inside the circle E, because any multiple of 9 is also a multiple of 3. Right? So what we're doing is we're sorting things into particular sets. Are there any disjoint sets here? What sets do not have any overlap? F and S. F and S, right? Okay. So F and S are disjoint. Is each statement true or false? Is E a subset of F? Is E a subset of F? No. No. So, false. We could say that F is a subset of E. Right? And they're not subsets of each other. If they were the same set, they could be subsets of each other. Okay, so E is not a subset of F. As a matter of fact, F is a subset of E. Is S a subset of E? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so true. S is contained in E. <coughs> is S a subset of F? No, because they are 
They're disjoint, right? Disjoint sets. F prime. F prime is all numbers from 1 to 40 except 15 and 30. 